Hey Ross World, my money makes money. We've talked about debt before and most of the time I talk about debt in a very negative manner, but I also say with debt you can also invest and you can also save, but you want to cut down that debt substantially and tweak things here and there. But let me put a twist on this. Now debt can be an actual good thing. I know there's some people um, around the financial world saying really debt is a bad thing. Also, I think I heard something about Dave Ramsey talking about you should never have debt. And I understand his, his perspective. He's a very, very intelligent guy, very intelligent guy. But on this particular point, I will have to disagree with him. And I also will have to agree with Dr. Boyce Watkins about debt because debt can actually be a good thing. It depends on what you're using your debt for. Okay, so some of us just accumulate and accure debt because of frivolous things. Maybe you rent up your credit card. Maybe you took out a personal loan to throw a party. People do this. Now, don't think this is above approach because people do these things. But I'm talking about if you're an entrepreneur and you need access to capital in order to start your business or to increase um, productivity or the efficiency of software or system or whatever it may be for your particular business, debt can be a good thing. Now, if you don't think millionaires take out loans, yes, they do. Millionaires are really smart because that's why they're still millionaires. Now, you're talking about those who got their millions, maybe about a lottery or somebody left the money. That's totally different because if they don't have financial advice, if they don't have someone in their life to guide them financially, those millions becomes thousands and those thousands becomes dollars and cents. So you have to understand millionaires take out loans in order to keep millions. And why do they do this? Now, they have their substantial wealth in their bank account, but they don't want to use their money. OK, they don't want to use their money. They would rather go out and take a low interest loan in order to jumpstart or even start a new business branching from another one. Now, I know I'm going around here, but I'm making a point about this debt. They don't want to use their money because they need something to fall back on. Say, for instance, you use all your money in your savings and your investing and then your business belly flops. What happens? You have nothing to fall back on. You have nothing to fall back on. Like Fat Joe actually lean back. But the point I'm making here is you have to understand that if the business flip flops, you have to pay back that loan. But guess how you pay back that loan? You pay back that loan in increments. You pay back that loan in installments. You pay those monthly payments. So that's something really obtainable. That's something really substantial in the point where you can actually make those payments. But if you use all of your savings, all of your investings, maybe you took away from your life insurance, whatever it may be, you now have nothing. Okay, you have nothing. So you have a business flip flop. Now you have no money for your own self. And now you're going to have to go out and get a loan anyway to probably cover your expenses. You get what I'm trying to say? So debt can actually be a good thing because these millionaires, when they take out these millions, they already tested their business plan. They already tested some sort of prototype and test the market in order to receive good feedback to keep these things going. Now, granted, every business that starts is <laughs> doesn't end and some don't end well. Catch the wordplay. So the point I'm making is debt is not always bad. And I also talk about, we're talking about debt inside of a house. So maybe your house is $200,000 and then you paid down $100,000. So what's left on your loan is $100,000, but your house is worth $300,000. Do the math. So even though you're in debt, your equity actually crushes your debt and you can sell your house for what? $200,000. Now, in a sense, you broke even or probably because of interest. I forgot about interest. You have to factor in interest. You still either broke even or you end up paying a little more for that house. It just depends on when you sold it. It depends on how much equity, if you can get what I'm saying. Cause some people actually make good money off of buying a house, waiting a while, maybe a year, and then selling that house for either two or three times the amount that is worth when they bought it, maybe because of the neighborhood. Maybe because of the upgrades they did inside of the house. You have to understand that all debt is not bad debt. There is good debt. What are you to do if in this world of ours, in this capitalist society, that 
you don't have an education. So if you don't have an education and you need to go to school, what do most people do if their family don't have the money? They look for grants. They look for scholarships from all different sorts of venues. So they take out this money and now what type of debt is that? Because a lot of people in America have what? Education debt. And one of my subscribers, I haven't forgot about you, told me to do a video about student loan. I have not forgot. And also, I believe it was Todd Smith. Shout out goes to him. He actually gives me a lot of good ideas for some of my videos. Sometimes too many ideas. Slow down, Todd. Just kidding, brother. And also Todd Smith told me to do a video about home buying through a particular website and a certain program. And I am working on that. I have to do at least 72 hours of research. And I don't mean a whole 72 hour, guys. I'm talking about literally three hours a day. The only thing I'm doing is researching that one particular thing. And sometimes I do it quicker, but I do allocate at least three days so I can get all the facts and all the printed information and then scatter across the internet. But anyway, that can be a good thing, especially when we're talking about your futures. People take out these extravagant student loans to go to these you know, expensive universities to get a piece of paper to say, hey, you are someone of substantial higher learning. You have went to a higher learning educational institution. And a lot of these pieces of paper actually mean something, guys. Now, you may be the dumbest guy in class, but if you got that piece of paper and that other guy who comes inside that office, comes inside that organization, he puts in his resume, and the only thing he has is a high school diploma, and you got that bachelor's degree, and you got that master's degree, chances are you're going to get that job. Chances are you're going to get that job over him. So did you getting $50,000 in debt pay off? Probably so. Probably so. It just depends on how much money that job is going to pay you. Because sometimes we get these degrees and the job doesn't pay you enough money to even cover the first payment of your loan. That's why they have what? <laughs> student loan deferment. That's why when you pay student loan installments, they are actually really, really low because they say, hey, this person is right out of school. Um, maybe some of them lucked up and maybe some of them didn't. So you only pay maybe 100, 150, but your student loan is like $50,000, okay? So we're gonna talk, get on student loans, but the point I'm talking about here is debt. Don't always think debt is a bad thing, especially in the instances that I'm talking about right here and right now. Now, sometimes your own created debt, <laughs> it's horrible, okay? You run up your credit costs for no apparent reason because, because you think you need a certain item. You know, debt on a car. Debt on a car is actually, in my opinion, I don't care what anybody says is bad, but for some reason I have car debt, okay? I can't pay um, right out for the car that I own now um, because it will definitely drain all of my money in my bank account. But like I said, I call that managed debt because sometimes we just manage to have debt that we're gonna have. But when it comes to all these other certain types of debt, entrepreneur, you're trying to start a business or you need access to capital or for student loans, et cetera, that's not always bad debt you have to look at it because you may not have the money to cover it or you may have the money to cover it, but you don't want to use all your savings and all your investments to do so because if it flops, then you have nothing. But if it flops and you took out a loan, you can pay that monthly and still have all your savings and investing. So understand guys that all debt is not bad debt. But bad debt is the debt you could have prevented simply because you want a new pair of Jordans or simply because you wanted some cool gadget. I be beating up Jordan, don't I? And I got two pairs, but they were $70. I'm off it. But the point I'm making here, guys, understand that the debt that you accumulated, was it smart debt? Or was it dumbass debt? Because some of us got some dumbass debt. I'm going to tell you something I'm going to end this damn video. Because I'm pissed at myself for this. And I was young. I was in school, in college, in West Virginia my freshman year. And I got bombarded with all these credit card applications. So here I am, a, a, a young black kid from the ghetto, Southeast D.C. Didn't really know about money. Had a football scholarship. Went to Cadoza Senior High. I don't think that was relevant. I knew nothing about money and I'm getting bombarded. Like, well, if you sign this and we're going to give you $5,000 of credit. And I'm like, credit? I mean, what is actually credit? Oh, well, credit is when 
you don't have the money or you have the money and you simply want to use our services. I'm like, well, I don't have $5,000. Well, I signed up. I don't even remember the interest rate. It could have been 30%. I had no recollection of what an interest rate was and what it was used for and it's used to make them rich. And so I got this Discover card and I purchased, <laughs> I purchased so much shit on that damn Discover card. It was ridiculous. Okay, so let me be realistic with you. I got that Discover card on Monday. I want to say by next Monday, okay, by next Monday, I already spent $3,000. You know why? Because the same thing I put out there, and you know I have to be real with you, I use it to... I used the money to sponsor a party. I sure did. I went out and bought all the liquor. I went out and bought all the alcohol. I, I bought a stereo system just for that party. I actually rented out a place. All to throw a party for what? And you probably say, oh, you did it for girls. No, you did it for your homeboys. No, I did it because I was stupid. I just wanted to throw a party. I never threw a party. Then that 3000 led to me spending and splurging and renting cars and stuff because I didn't have a car in college because my car actually broke down on the way to college. <laughs> I only paid $600, so that pretty much tells you. But anyway, I spent all that money, $5,000 in two weeks. Now, I spent Discover Cards money, $5,000 in two weeks. And I promise you, when it's all said and done, when I pay that back, when that account hit collections because I was a poor college kid on a scholarship and the stipend that the football team that was giving me to pay for my personal expenses was not enough to cover that too. So what did I do? I didn't pay it. I didn't pay it because I didn't have it. So, but years later, it haunts you back because what do collection accounts do? They keep selling, keep selling your account, keep selling your account, especially if you call in, you do all these other things, they keep selling your account. But I probably end up paying seven to eight thousand dollars when it's all said and done because of interest and the time that it took me to pay it off. And at this point in time, I wasn't really savvy about anything financial. I was not savvy about, hey, you can negotiate a charge off, which still hurts your credit. But nevertheless, it's now done. You don't owe those people no more or getting things deleted. According, and I believe that the acts of the F FCRA, the Fair Credit Reporting Act, 609 and 611, those things were, wasn't even around then, these clauses, these laws. So I was pretty much shit out of luck and I paid about $8,000 on a $5,000 credit card. Probably was even more, I just don't recall, but I know that I paid more than $5,000. So I'm just gonna leave with that. This video, it's went longer than I intended to be, but nevertheless, understand that there's good debt, then there's your debt, which is bad debt that you made for no apparent reason, only because you wanted something. This is Raw Squirrel where we understand that all debt is not bad debt. I'm out.